mentioned. Okay, so that was one type. I have told you in my previous video we have different types of circuits. So this is one of them. That is pseudo NMOS logic. Okay, so this is the name of the logic uh, next logic circuit under CMOS implementation. That is pseudo NMOS logic. Okay, so what is this? Let us see. A typical pseudo NMOS gate is illustrated in the figure below. Okay, so this is that figure. So before that, let us see some uh, what this circuit consists of. In this configuration, a single PMOS transistor acts as the load device. Okay, that is in the pull-up part. You see, uh, there is one change. If you compare this with the complementary CMOS uh, circuit, there is one change. That is, uh, in the complementary CMOS part, we had uh, PMOS transistors in the pull-up part and NMOS transistors in the pull-down part, right? So in this pseudo NMOS logic. In the pull-up part, we have only one single PMOS transistor, okay, with its gate permanently connected to ground. Okay, the gate is permanently connected connected to ground. It means that the PMOS transistor would be on forever. Okay, it remains in the on condition forever. This is one change. And in the pull-down part, the NMOS transistors would be remaining as it is. You don't have any change. So this is one change in the pseudo NMOS. So hope you understood. Very easy. That is in the pull-up part, we have only one single PMOS transistor. Whether you give any expression in the pull-up part, they would be consisting of only one PMOS transistor, where that PMOS transistor's gate would be permanently given to the ground. Okay, it means that that PMOS transistor would be remaining on permanently. This design is similar to the conventional NMOS logic. So one more name you could be giving this as conventional NMOS logic. Where the depletion or enhancement mode of NMOS load transistor is replaced with the PMOS device. Okay, so this is the diagram here. I as I was saying here, you see here they have taken the same example here. That is, they have taken the expression AB plus C into D plus E. And here you see in the pull-up part we have only one PMOS transistor. Okay, and the gate of that is given to the ground. And in the pull-down part we have the NMOS transistor connection. As for NMOS characteristics, how it follows. Okay, in the same way it is given. You see here, A into B. So if the terms are getting multiplied, then the NMOS would be in series, and when the terms are getting added, the NMOS would be in parallel. The same way connections are made here in the pull down part, and this is the pull up part where we have only one single PMOS transistor. Okay, so this was the how to draw the pseudo NMOS logic. This is the design. Next is operation and design considerations for this pseudo NMOS. The pull-up device, that is PMOS, is always turned on. Okay, I've told you right, it is always on, meaning the circuit operates operates with ration logic, where the gain ratio of the P load of the NMOS driver transistor, that is beta load by beta driver, must be carefully selected. Why it should be carefully selected? Because the PMOS transistor is always on. It won't be in uh, the toggling state or off state. It is always on. So that's why the beta and by beta P ratio would be mattering a lot. The transistor sizing must ensure proper switching and logic level generation. The effective beta n by beta p ratio, that is the beta ratio, must be chosen in accordance to the values derived from the circuit equations. One of the main drawback of this uh, pseudo NMOS logic is, as with conventional NMOS logic, it's a static power dissipation. Okay, so this is one drawback. Since the PMOS load is always on, current continuously flows whenever the pull down network is active. Okay. Whenever this pull down network is active, the current would be flowing continuously because the PMOS network is on. Okay, so that's one drawback you need to be knowing. Transistor count and input loading. So what do you mean? Transistor count means if you have a for the pseudo NMOS, if you have n number of inputs, the transistor count would be n plus one. Okay. For example, in this case, you see here we have five inputs. That is A, B, C, D, E. The total number of transistors used to build build this circuit is six transistors. That is five plus one. You see here one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that is one uh, uh, they have mentioned here. That is an n input pseudo NMOS gate requires n plus one transistors. Okay, whereas in case of complementary CMOS, when we have n inputs, so we would we should be having two n transistors. That is, since it it has equal number of transistors distributed in pull up part as well as pull down part. Okay, so that's why for complementary CMOS we have we need for n inputs we need two n transistors, but for pseudo NMOS we need for n inputs we need n plus one transistors. Okay. In a fully complementary CMOS gate, the capacitive load on each input is at least two unit gate loads. 
but in pseudo nmos logic the minimum input load can be just one unit gate load since we have only the single transistor used per input term okay however if minimum sized driver transistors are used the pull up gain must be reduced to maintain adequate noise margins which in turn slows the gates rise time so comparison between a conventional nmos and cmos logic the pseudo nmos gates do not have significant advantage over conventional nmos depletion load gates except that they allow emulation of nmos circuits in a cmos process a pseudo nmos gate can offer a higher current density compared to fully complement cmos gate and due to the reduced transistor count since the transistor count is reduced in case of uh, pseudo nmos we have higher current density compared uh, compared to that of the complementary cmos okay so in summary pseudo nmos logic provides a method for implementing logic gates with a fewer transistors but the but at the cost of static power dissipation and slower rise time okay since we have only less number of transistor we have one uh, important uh, we have one limitation for that as well that is static power dissipation and slower rise time okay so yeah this was all about the pseudo nmos logic so in detail at the end of all these logic circuits i'm going to uh, explain you with one expression all these uh, how to draw all these circuits okay so stay tuned for that as well that i'm going to do after explaining all the concepts okay yeah so in the next video we are going to discuss about dynamic cmos logic so stay tuned for that so that's all for the video guys i hope you understood and uh, these concepts are very easy so that's why i would uh, suggest you to please watch the videos till the end so hello everyone uh, welcome to this new video so in this video we have an expression that is y is equal to a plus b into c plus d okay so this is the expression for this i'm going to draw as i've told you in my starting only that uh, i'm going to draw the logical uh, cmos circuits designs using pseudo nmos logic uh, then we are going to draw using uh, dynamic cmos then uh, c square mos logic and cvsl logic okay using these four logics let us try to draw this expressions circuit diagrams okay so first let us start with pseudo nmos so for pseudo nmos we have studied that if we have n inputs we should be using n plus 1 transistors so totally we are using five inputs here and transistors are 5 plus 1 that is six transistors in case of pseudo nmos right so based on that let us draw the pseudo nmos circuit so i have told you right in the vdd pull up part we are having only one pmos transistor and that gate terminal is permanently connected to ground okay and from here we are checking the output and for the pull down part the nmos logic you should be applying that is a plus b so a plus b so that's why those two should be in parallel into c so a and b into c so it should, it should be in series plus d e so again it's getting added so from here you should be taking one more parallel branch and d and e should be in series okay d e so this is the complete circuit diagram of pseudo nmos logic for five inputs so here you see here we have used pmos transistor one pmos transistor and five nmos transistor so totally six transistors we have used for this pseudo nmos